OpenAI heated up the browser wars by launching their browser that is AI enabled called Atlas. I'm going to get into what they launched, what the promise was, and where I think it works and where I think it doesn't. So first off, what did they launch? It is a browser that looks a lot like Chrome or any other browser you might use, except it has a chat assistant in the side. In this sense, it's very similar to other smart browsers that have already launched. The comment browser from Perplexity comes to mind. Exactly the same idea. You just launch it in the sidebar and you do your task with the chat, and then you have the main browser pane just the way it always is. I can actually show you what that looks like. So here we are in the browser. I'm actually working on a presentation about the browser. I realize that's super meta, but you can see I have a little chat here, right? And you can kind of interact with the chat. In this case, what I had the agent do is to help me create the PowerPoint presentation about the agent. And just to be transparent, it was able to lay out the styling. So it got this green and this blue highlight uh, really effectively. It was able to lay out the title. It was able to lay out the dark background looked very professional. It also was able to take and expand the copy really effectively. Where it didn't work as well was it struggled with some of the details of formatting. I know this doesn't look like fancy formatting, but just to be transparent, getting it to do white text on background was not something it was super good at. But that's a minor nitpick, right? I don't want to go into that. I want to talk about the larger theme here. I wanted to try something that was a real life task and just to play with it and see how it worked. And I got to say, this is closer to useful browser utility with AI than I've had in a while. And that's what makes me bullish on the trajectory here. I don't know that this browser by itself today is knock it out of the water, incredible, we're gonna dethrone Chrome. But I see the trajectory that this team is shipping on and I'm super interested in where they go next. And I do think there's some really interesting opportunities in the way this browser modality works, so the way it interacts. So for example, if I say, uh, please adjust the font size on this slide, it's going to take that challenge as we chat and actually start to do something, you can see it start to organize and turn the sparkles on and actually do something with my screen while I go and do other work. And so if I go and I look at other things, I can come back later. If I go and look at my LinkedIn, for example, I can then come back to my slide deck and see that it continues to work. Ironically, what the slide deck is showing is one of the things that I think is most useful here. Think about the boring work that you do on the web. Things like automating folder creation. That takes a lot of time. You can do that work much more easily if you just open a tab and you ask this browser to do it. Similarly, you can think about the work you would do as a writing coach. You can see it has these issues, right? Like it actually made it worse. And this is why I don't want to overpromise it. This thing does struggle with some of the aesthetics and some of the direct tasks. I also asked it to book a yoga class for me. It eventually got through, but it was about 10 times more painful than booking it myself. And so I look at these situations and I say, where are there linear tasks that I can get into that enable the browser to be at its best, not at its worst? And so instead of throwing it into something that has fairly high ambiguity, like a PowerPoint, how can I give it a task where it's set up to succeed? In this case, creating folders is super linear. You can't screw it up. You create the folder, you name the folder, and you're done. Another one that I think is really effective is being a second pair of eyes on the screen. So if you're writing something, can it be a Grammarly or writing coach for you on the side? I realize that there are probably people at Grammarly that will hear this and sweat bullets, but like, I think it's fair. Like it can literally look at anything you're writing on the web and give you a fairly thoughtful writing critique. I think that's a great use case for it. I think another great use case is just letting the LLM do the planning and thinking for you where you have complexity. So a great example is look at this spreadsheet, perform some simple calculations off the spreadsheet. I don't really have time to, and then come back. As long as it's in the browser and it can see it, it can do that math for you. That can simplify budgeting, that can simplify financial tasks. It can simplify a lot of the basic math and thinking that we do around the web because a lot of it happens in the browser anyway. A creative one that I've come up with, I don't know, you, you tell me if you think this is effective, but in theory, this should work really well for time tracking because you should be able to investigate time spent per site or task 
by interacting with the browser around what you were actually doing. And that brings up one of the most powerful features about the Atlas browser, which is it remembers more about you the more you use Atlas. And so it will have an Atlas specific memory set that is private to you, they say, where if you are interacting with the browser more, you get more value. The browser knows you better. The browser knows your previous chats. It knows the previous places you visited, and it understands what you are trying to do because it has seen your work already. So those are some of the positives. If we turn around and we look at some of the difficult things, I think you saw some of them in the little demo I gave you. Like there's some challenges around ambiguous tasks like PowerPoint deck creation. I think there's also an unclear use case around the value of the utility they're trying to go for. So to unpack that, if it books your yoga session for you in 20 minutes, instead of you taking two minutes to do it, is that really adding value even if it is doing all the work? I have questions. Another example, if it is going to be able to shop for you, do you lose the pleasure of shopping? Do you lose the pleasure of planning the trip? Planning the trip is one of the things that is right on that browser's suggested use case. So we have to think about what we want to do and whether we want to delegate that task to an AI browser. And that's gonna become a very real thing because this is not the last update we'll see on this browser. This is not the last browser that's gonna launch. AI browsers are a big thing. And that brings me to my final question, which is what about security? Because right now, these browsers are taking in the text from a website. That's actually one of the great use cases for them is they can summarize text on a website. You can use them to look at YouTube videos and tell you what's in the YouTube video. You could probably do that for this video. But if you use them to do that and you are on the wrong kind of page, a prompt injection attack is possible. If someone has put text on that page that instructs an LLM to do something malicious, the LLM in the browser, it's not clear that it can distinguish that. In fact, there are known vulnerabilities in other AI browsers that I expect would persist here where the browser will treat every piece of text it gets on the page, even malicious text, as part of the prompt. And then where are you? Because at that point, it just follows the prompt and the prompt injection attack succeeds. And so it seems like the LLM browser builders expect us to just watch these things browse around the web very slowly, and that's how we protect ourselves from prompt injection attacks. But to actually have value, we need to not have to watch them. They need to get faster, and we need to not have to watch them. And it's not clear to me yet how we can show and demonstrate safety. And I know the teams at Perplexity, building the Comet browser, teams at OpenAI, building this browser, they care deeply about security. So I'm not suggesting they don't but I'd like to see the kind of browser safety card development that we've had with model safety cards, where we start to say, you know what? We know this browser is safe in these ways because we've tested it for these vulnerabilities. This is the known risk for this browser, and this is what you should use it for. Because otherwise, I think there's an assumption that either the browser is default safe, which is what Chrome has taught us, and that's dangerous here, or there's an assumption that it should never be used, which I think is also an overreaction. I do think there's real value here for what I'm going to call boring web work that is low ambiguity. If I want to just set it to do something very linear, like click around and triage my email for a long time in the background, and I'm going to go off and do something else and I don't care, and it's fairly low risk because maybe it's just making folders for email, fine, it can go do that. Anything that is like that, where it's like you can't screw it up, you just have to logically follow the task on the web for a long time, it's going to be great at that. And that's fine with me because we humans don't love doing that work. So if it wants to pick that up, that's great. So overall, my grade for this browser, C plus, B minus maybe, it's not really at a point where I think it's going to overtake Chrome, but it is much, much better than the web browsing value I've seen from OpenAI previously. So agent mode, I didn't get a lot of value from it. This is definitely better than that. And so I see the trajectory of this team and I could see in six months this is a really interesting browser. If you want my quick take versus Comet, I still prefer Comet a little bit because I think it has some data inputs and outputs on key sites that make it useful. I use it for LinkedIn a lot because I can see pending invitations through the Comet browser and it's super helpful. It also has great plugins to calendar. I expect that will get fixed with this browser too, but it's not there yet. And I find that the speed I get from that direct data input output is useful. I think we're going to get to a two-speed web where we're going to start to see those data inputs and outputs 
becoming very useful for agentic browsers where they're available. And we're going to see slower service, sort of off-road service where the browser has to use the UI. That's my first impression. What did you think of Atlas? I'd be curious to hear.